Here now is Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. Um, thank you, Speaker, so much for your, your patience. I've, I've reported on you long enough to know that you're both patient and determined. So I had, I had faith that this we would make this happen together. <laughs> Well, any time I can hear Jane Mayer, I'm happy to do so. So no apology necessary. And well, to hear you as well. Well, that's kind of you. And I want to start today with the announcement uh, uh, that Ruth Bader Ginsburg, this really blew my mind. I've been thinking about it all day. Um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg will lie in state in the, in the United States Capitol. And if I am not mistaken, be the first woman in history to do so. It's remarkable that that is the case. Well, she is the first woman to lie in state in the Capitol uh, before we were able to have Rosa Parks yes. lie in honor in the Capitol. Lying in honor is for those who have not been in public office. Lying in state is a different honor uh, that Ruth Bader Ginsburg rightly has. We're so proud of that. You, you have been very clear. I know that uh, you, you have known the justice uh, that, uh, for a long time and, and obviously are mourning her loss. You've also been very clear about um, the stakes of, her, uh, uh, of, of the nomination of her replacement, particularly about the Affordable Care Act and the fact that the Supreme Court is set to hear arguments that would uproot all of it. What do you want people to know about the, the, the background condition under which this, this election actually is taking place and the Department of Justice's uh, brief in that case. Well, first, let me just say how sad it is that we lost uh, this wonderful, wonderful giant of the court uh, at this time. Uh, any, any time she would leave would be a, a, a catastrophic loss for our country. But at this time, and uh, I would have hoped that we could have had a few more days to respectfully mourn her passing. I do know that passing on the last minutes before uh, uh, Rosh Hashanah is a special honor of the righteous in the Jewish faith. Uh, so that may be why God took her at this time, because she certainly was righteous in any way. Uh, the Republicans decided that they would be disrespectful and move ahead that very night by saying that they were going to have a vote on her replacement. Let's remember this is a lifetime appointment, somebody who could be there for 30 years. It's important to uphold the Constitution of the United States. It should be done with care, whoever the president is. So the hypocrisy of the Republicans on this is, is really not important in people's daily lives, but it is indicative that they don't keep their word. And this appointment, the, me, the reason the president and Leader McConnell are moving forward so quickly is because they want to overturn the Affordable Care Act. And when people understand, and they do, what this means in their lives, no more benefit of the pre-existing condition, no more having your children be on your policy until 26 years old. No more having Medicaid expanded to cover long-term health care and the needs of our children uh, with pre-existing conditions. And returning to a time where being a woman is a pre-existing medical condition. The people know that, and that's why the Republicans are rushing. They want to get it done so they can overturn the Affordable Care Act. And you know what? they're gonna be paying this price for elections to come. Elections to come. Everyone's looking at what makes a difference in these uh, uh, senatorial races, we'll see. But what they don't really understand is they're gonna see 2018 again and again and again in terms of their defeats let, in the Congress. Let me ask this. I mean, you know, we talk about uh, the sort of electoral consequences and the substantive consequences for people's health care. I mean, again, in the midst of a pandemic, right? Who, who knows in the midst of a pandemic. what long-term uh, lung or heart damage people who survive COVID have. We're, we're just learning about that. Um, there's there's a, a growing sense that the Senate is broken in some ways and that there's a kind of democratic deficit in America. And if, if, if Trump's able to appoint this justice after, after what they did with Merrick Garland, that Democrats have to be thinking in more procedurally radical ways, right? Adding new members to the court, getting rid of the filibuster. Are you thinking along those lines? Do you favor those two uh, policies? Well, I think that we have to think short term and long term. Uh, plenty of time when we win the election, House, Senate and the White House, which we would today, but the election isn't today. 
And we can't have just a conversation if you want, but we want to have effective political action. We have to not agonize, but organize. And that means that we must show to people right now, and, and they know for themselves because this is their experience, uh, that this move on the part of Mitch McConnell, and I see you said Mitch America. No, it's Moscow Mitch. It's Moscow Mitch. Let's correct your sign there, or at least understand how others uh, uh, refer to him. And, and there's a reason for that. But anyway, keeping it on this, the, uh, the, the fact is people don't care about what we're doing in Washington. They care about what is happening at their kitchen table in their lives, their health. And by the way, the three most important health issues in this election are health care, health care, and health care. At a time when we should be crushing the virus and the president has ignored the science, ignored the science, criminally ignored the science, and instead uh, we have now crossing into 200,000 people who have died. Instead of crushing the virus, they want to crush the Affordable Care Act. This is what we have to focus on right now so that people get out and vote, and they vote early, and they vote in good health, and they vote for their health. Vote your health. Vote your health, and that means the Affordable Care Act, pre-existing conditions, and the rest. They get rid of pre-existing conditions, they have a price to pay for elections to come. They get rid of a woman's right to choose, they have a price to pay for elections to come. So when you're looking at these senators who are in the near term here, that's one thing. But others, uh, you know what, there's, what, 43 days until the election? It's 44 days until the next election. You know, many of these senators are looking at their next election. You and women, people of color in their district, in their states, uh, uh, will, uh, will remember if they gave them a vote for their health care or if they gave president a vote for his power grab. You, you have um, uh, some business ahead of you in terms of uh, uh, a must-pass piece of legislation, a continuing yes. resolution to fund the government, or the government shuts down before Election Day. Mitch McConnell yeah. uh, issued a statement. You, you, you came out with the draft language. Mitch McConnell doesn't like it. Uh, there's some uh, farm legislation he wants to see in there he doesn't have. Here's my question to you. Is the CR, is that leverage on the fight over the justice, or is that a parallel track that has nothing to do with the justice yeah. nomination? It's a parallel track. We wouldn't even think of threatening to shut down government. A great part of the West is on fire. Our South, uh, uh, the uh, Gulf Coast is battered by hurricanes. We have a pandemic in the country. We're fighting for our heroes, our state and local government, uh, and, and federal employees who are health care, our, our first responders, our teachers, our teachers, our teachers, our sanitation um, uh, transportation workers. We want them to test, trace, treat, wear masks, separate, and the rest. And we need public employees to do that. So we're not about shutting down government. And it's not a lever. By the way, the Republicans don't believe in governance. It's a welcome thing for them to shut down government. That's why they've done it over and over. But in addition to that, you think if we shut down government, they would say, OK, now we won't move forward with the justice. Right. No, they won't. Right. They won't, because they are on a path to undo the Affordable Care Act. They're on a path to undo a woman's right to choose. And there are many more issues that relate to the LGBTQ community, clean air, clean water, pollution. It's, they're coming after your children. Protect your children from what they're trying to do in this court. Um, there is nothing, so, so I, I take you there and I feel like that's, that's clarifying, right? Like these are parallel tracks, the government, the CR negotiations, you view that as something that's going to get done, has to get done. There's yes, the just, there's the nomination fight in Senate. But then between those two, there is the fact that we, the HEROES Act, which was passed in May, Mitch McConnell said, we don't have to move quickly, we're going to take our time. Um, they, they passed uh, what you said was a far too small package, uh, you know, a, a few weeks ago. Is it your sense now that there's not nothing forthcoming, that, that, that restaurants that are closing yeah. now or bars that are closing now or all the people, the, the, the municipal governments that need budget help that are going to start laying off policemen and firefighters and teachers and all those folks, that this is it until the election? Well, no, I certainly hope not. But let me say, Mitch McConnell said more than you attributed to Matt Scale Mitch. He said to, of the states, let them go bankrupt. That's what he said. Let them go bankrupt. Really? 
Well, that's contrary to what the uh, chairman of the Fed says. State and local governments are important to the economy of our country. And then these people are really, you and I would not be able to function without the work of our state and local government employees, whether it's health care, first responders, as I said, sanitation, transportation, food, teachers, and the rest. How do you think we function? And, and they want to shut that down. Now, those people, the services will diminish, taxes may be raised, people will be fired almost to the tune of 5 million people. They will go on unemployment insurance. What's so smart about that? Let them go bankrupt. He pushed a pause button when we were trying to put forth a comprehensive plan to, to crush the virus four months ago. Crush the virus. Instead, they ignored the science, the science, the science, and now we're crossing 200,000. Let me just say this. Please. My heart is broken over the death of the notorious Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Madam Justice. But 200,000 people's families are suffering the same loss of a loved one, a spouse, a child, a sibling, a parent. So many hundreds of 200,000 people and more to come unless they embrace science. They're anti-science and they're anti-governance. They, can, they want to ignore science so that governance doesn't have to weigh in and require anything. So you see them undoing the guidance from the yeah. uh, Center for Disease Control. I, you see them undermining the scientists at the Fed, uh, Food and Drug Administration. It's just appalling. Yeah, I want to ask again, you, let me ask you about that. because are that, dying. There, there, was, there was this reversal on guidance today about airborne transmission from the CDC. They posted and they took, uh, then they then took down. There's belief, belief that right. there's some political interference there. I mean, do you, do you, what is your current posture towards these agencies of the federal government, whether the FDA, the CDC, all of HHS, which appear to have sort of been taken over from the top uh, by these sort of political appointees to push the science in the direction of the president's messaging? What, what, what does that mean for our ability to, to crush the virus, as you said? Well, I think it's sinful, really. It's immoral. The president wants politics to determine how we approach the, the, the virus, not science. I have tremendous support for the science at the FDA. They're working 24-7, some of the best minds in the country, to make sure that we will have a safe and effective vaccine when that is ready. Not one day before, not one day after, just as soon as it is ready. I, I think the CDC has been totally discredited. Thank you, President Trump, for discrediting the Center for Disease Control, which is the prevention agency to stop the spread. But if you think it's a hoax and it's going to stop miraculously by some magic or something like that, uh, then you have discredited the Center for Disease Control. And HHS is completely a joke because that has been taken over politically uh, by the administration. It's such a tragedy because this should be a place where the politics has no bearing whatsoever. It's about the health and well-being of the American people. And we are leaders in the world to cooperate with other countries. And yet the president wants to cut that off as well. Something is very wrong here. Why else would they not have accepted our strategic scientific plan? Testing, tracing, treatment, separation, sanitation, wearing face masks. Why would they have turned that into the tragedy that it is 200,000 people? Would we have saved them all? No, I'm not saying that, but we would have saved many. Yeah. And, we, and we can make a difference to save some as we go. Forgetting, if you want to forget what went before, let's talk about how we go forward to save lives. Because I want to tell you, many of these people now have a pre-existing medical condition. Millions more yeah. than who had it before. You talked about it earlier. So now you have many more people. They take away the pre-existing medical condition. They, with their fast track for something that should be serious, take a deep breath. We've had a loss. Okay, now let's prepare for the future. This is a lifetime appointment to the Supreme Court. This isn't a casual filling in a, uh, an office for a short, unexpired term. Yeah. 
So why should we treat the court that way, in such a frivolous way? But nonetheless, the president doesn't care. He doesn't care. Now, it'll be well, interesting to see, because in our house, we have such beautiful diversity, and so do the states that some of these senators have to run in. They'll be hearing from some of that diversity. Speaker Nancy Pelosi, um, it's always great to talk to you, and thank you again uh, for bearing Just with us through those technical difficulties. I appreciate it. My pleasure. No, no problem. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Ahead of what will be one of the most litigated elections ever, the president is counting on the courts to deliver him another four years. Dahlia Lipwick on the looming legitimacy crisis just ahead.